guys, it's Dina. Hey guys, it's Dina Jacobs. Okay, we're trying this for the seventh time. Okay, seven is a good luck number. So I want to welcome you to Fly Nubian Queen dot com or here on Facebook. It's a network for melanated women just like you. Um, I want you to go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and share button right now. Just take a moment while doing some of the promotions and waiting for people to get in. Hey, Marcy, how's it going? All right, I see people starting to come in. Um, also, if you could subscribe to FlyMovieAndKingTV.com, our network for grown for men, our growing network for men. Text Queens to 31996 to receive text alerts and special offers. And please take a second right now, again, as you guys are coming in, to hit that like button. We really appreciate that. Share this topic. Tonight we're going to talk about alpha women. Is it a form of toxic femininity? What is alpha females? What are alpha females? What uh, are, you know, what we have in our common belief is that the truth? of what an alpha female really is, because it kind of derived from uh, observing the animal kingdom, in particular wolves and primates. And as we know, primates are kind of like our cousins when it comes to the animal kingdom. Hey, Darcia, um, good to see you in here. Uh, let's see. Okay, just checking in, making sure everything is going good since this, we were having a little bit of technical difficulties earlier around 7 p.m. So for those of you who are still here, thank you for the thumbs up. I see them coming through. Thumbs up, like, share, subscribe to flynubianqueen.com. Also, we have something new going on, which is our iTunes podcast, Fly Nubian Queens on iTunes. So if you could go there and subscribe after this particular live stream. We would really appreciate it, and that way you can take the queens wherever you go. You can work out with us. You can take us in the car. You can listen to us anytime, and that would be, um, we'd really appreciate your patronage there. If you want to get your money up, go to flynubianmoney.com. Want to get that business started? Go to flynubianbusiness.com, and I know you want some Fly Nubian Queen gear, so you should go to shop FNQ. Com. So let's get into this topic, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Arthur. Love y'all flying Nubian Queens. Yes, thank you for posting that. Arthur is, is putting it on blast in the comments um, to text Queens to 31996. So happy Cinco de Mayo to those of you who uh, have celebrated, are celebrating. Maybe you are watching this live stream while you're out having a few drinks. Thanks for being here with us tonight. So I did post earlier, I don't know how many of you, but if you could just show me in the comments, how many of you actually, thanks for all the love, people. I so appreciate you. I see those hearts coming through. Um, how many of you had a chance to watch Franz DeWald's video uh, on the science of the alpha male? Um, it was a short 15-minute video, but in that video, I'm just going to summarize it for those of uh, us who didn't uh, get a chance to watch it before they came in tonight. Let me see real quick, how many of you got a chance to watch it? Can you just put one, type one real quick into the comments if you did get a chance to see it? Let's see what you guys are saying here. Okay, while I'm waiting to see who actually saw it, I'll go ahead and give a little bit of a summary. So in that video, he kind of touches on, it's a TED Talk that he does, where he touches on some of the research that he's been doing throughout his many years of researching primate behavior and uh, how they group together, how they work and function, live and love and how they uh, copulate and procreate and all that kind of stuff. And so he gets really deep into a book that he wrote, or actually he touches on a book that he wrote that gets deeper into the hierarchical system and the way that the primates interact. And he was the person who coined the phrase of the alpha male. And somehow this got twisted around throughout the years. And what is actually an alpha male, according to his studies and the coinage of the phrase, ended up being something totally different to what we now perceive to be an alpha male. And then you fast forward a few years from what our uh, collective perception of the alpha male is, which is someone who is, oh, is aggressive, um, take charge, hypersexual, um, a guy who is a leader, um, 
we kind of think of, of alpha males as these kind of like Wall Street guys who are making all this money and doing cocaine and partying like crazy with a bunch of hookers, or whatever, you know, Wolf of Wall Street type of thing. Um, and what Franz attempts to do in this TED Talk is kind of bring it back to the initial definition of what an alpha is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch on that really briefly here, just so we can be clear about what an alpha male is. And then we're going to dive into what an alpha female is. Hey, Dante, how are you doing? I see you say hello, queen. Let me see. We've got a couple other people in here. Who watched the video? I saw author get a chance to watch the video. That's great. Tim Bailey, how you doing? Shalom. And Dean. And yes, welcome back. I'm glad that you guys are here every, I see some familiar faces or names, I should say. So an alpha male, what are the alpha male qualities? Now, initially, as I said, we're thinking about someone like Leonardo DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street. We're thinking about some chest thumping, you know, cocaine doing, high energy, aggressive, crazy, testosterone fueled male who's going around taking names, uh, kicking ass and taking take names at all and just kind of like charging his way through we think about military guys we think about bros on the football field those are what we're thinking about in our collective um reasoning our collective knowledge we're thinking that those are the alpha males but what franz is attempting to do in his ted talk is say that actually he's the person that coined the phrase and this is what an alpha male is according to his studies and research an alpha male is a diplomat. It is the leader in the group, okay? They can be aggressive when needed. However, he does point out in this video that it doesn't have to be the biggest, beefiest, most muscular male. It can be a smaller male, but he gets to this position of power by who he chooses as friends. And what he will do is he will choose an elder or someone who has a, a big position of power and he will kind of get their blessing. Sometimes the alpha male will come in and he will, you know, drop a bomb in the situation and blow everything up and then boom, he's the one left standing. So it can be taken by force, the alpha male position, but it also can be taken by campaigning. And more often, more often than not, that can be how it's done. So he will be the chief consoler. He will be very generous and he will start to go around and he will give the females food and, and be very open and sharing his food. And we know in the primate world, the animal world, sharing of food is a big deal. A lot of uh, groups of animals, they have a hierarchy on who's going to eat. So if a male is campaigning on becoming the alpha male, he may not be in that position yet, but he's going to allow the other males and females in the group that are at a lesser position to enjoy the food with him and enjoy the spoils of whatever he goes out and gets to provide. Um, as a chief consoler, He's someone who keeps the peace. He's a peacemaker. He's a diplomat. So when there's other fights and things that are going on between um, pe members of the group, he will come in and say, oh, whoa, whoa. And he won't necessarily take sides. But if he does, he fights for the underdog. He fights for the underdog. That's a key component. So he's a protector. Um, he stand, let's see, what is he? He has a lot of female support typically. Now this can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. He has access to females sexually, but it's not just sexually. That's what kind of Franz broadens that a little bit. Yes, there is sexual access, but it's also, he has a lot of female support. So the females might be bringing him food. The females might support him in his efforts to take over, to campaign. You know, they might be going around helping others. And we see that in the political system. Women, regardless of who the candidate is, women become a very big part of the campaigning for um, men and or women who are campaigning for political office. So we see things like that happening. Even now, if we look at, you know, some of the stuff where uh, I think it's Biden who just picked a black female. So she is going to be campaigning on his behalf and trying to get people in our community in particular and possibly in her other community that she belongs to, to uh, kind of gather support. So she could be seen as the beta because the beta is the second in line, and we'll get into that. Um, let's see, 
one of the other things is there's a lot of reciprocity that goes on with his coalition members. Coalition is like his homies, his friends, his, you know, his, all his folks that he hangs out with, his tight knit circle. So in the case of, you know, since we uh, have been touching on Joe Biden's uh, an, uh, recent appointment of uh, that black woman whose name I can't remember right now. I'm so embarrassed, guys. Forgive me. But, oh, Simone Sanders. Since with, with that's in the news, that's an easy example to kind of just touch on. He would be giving back something to her in order to strengthen their bonds and her commitment to support him in his rise to the position of alpha. Okay, so the main things are he's a consoler, he's a diplomat, he's generous, he's, uh, he enacts reciprocity, he's uh, very supportive of his friends and his coalition, he has large female support and support of other males, but by getting the females on board, that kind of gives him some insulation and also others to go out. And kind of say, oh, this is a good guy. He he shared his food with me yesterday. He came around and tickled the babies. And he even Franz even talks about that in the primate thing. He it, they're like tickling the primates are tickling the baby, the alpha who's trying to campaign. That's when they're doing it by a more, I guess, sort of a diplomatic or empathic sort of way versus the alpha male who comes in and just tries to beat everybody down who's at on top and kill kill the alpha male and then take over those are considered actually to be more along the lines of a beta now betas can rise to alpha they can rise to alpha um a lot of times they do it by force and that's going to lead us into what an alpha female is so before we get into that we're going to talk a little bit about when he fulfills those roles, he always is supported and well-liked. So when he does the things that I listed out, not the violence, not the like bullying, but when an alpha male gains power through diplomacy, through reciprocity, generosity, and coalition building, he is typically very well-liked and respected in the community, and people tend to support a very long reign of that type of alpha male leader. When it is taken by force or underhanded lying, scheming, and a lot of beating down, and I'm the alpha type of um, activity, he's secretly despised, and there's always people trying to like get him out of there ASAP. And once he falls out of power, typically he's killed, he's done away with, or he's ostracized and put out of the community completely. So that's something to keep in mind about the difference between an, a true alpha who rises in a way where he, it can be sustainable, and an alpha who has a little bit more of the beta qualities, um, which we'll get into shortly, and takes things by force. They're typically uh, short-lived rulers for the most part, and when they do fall, they fall very hard um, from their position of power. So he touches on when an alpha male does lose a position of power, but he's very well-liked, he's still taken care of. He's still taken care of by the community. So he said there was one, a uh, primate that had fell from power, but he got sick or something like that, but people were still bringing him gifts and food. He couldn't hunt anymore or anything like that because he was ill. They were bringing him things to comfort him and leaves to put behind his back when he was leaning up against the tree and, you know, consoling and, you know, those little things they do where they pick the bugs out and all that. So he still had a lot of love. A lot of females were coming and, and showing him love, even up into his old age. So that's what happens when you're a well-liked alpha male. And we can see that in our society with our past presidents. We can see that in society with elders that we really love and hold on to, that those, people, those men are very well taken care of. We can look at our grandpas, and then we can shift in and start to look at our grandmas, and we can see when we have big mama, that big mama might be considered to be an alpha female in your family, but it's not necessarily a given, because we all know those situations where auntie might be the alpha female, and even big mama goes to auntie for advice, consoling, and things of that nature. And so let's get into how do we really identify what an alpha female is. But before we do that, I just want to do a little promo here. Thank you for coming to flynubianqueen.com. Please like, please subscribe, please share this. Today we are talking about 
alpha females. Is that a form of toxic femininity? As we know it today, I think it might be because what we can do today, most of us in the collective of the world that we're in today, most people consider alpha females to kind of take on the characteristics of a beta male. So what is a beta male? A beta male is the second in line to the alpha. They are typically the enforcer. What is an enforcer? An enforcer is someone who goes out and makes sure that whatever the alpha is putting into place happens. And sometimes that is a lot of times that's by any means necessary. So they might be roughing people up. They might be um, holding people's feet to the fire to get things done. They might be, um, you know, that's typically the person that's more so beating their chest than the alpha male. The alpha male is on his throne or on her throne. And the beta is the person who's kind of like, yeah, and that's what they said. So, you know, the alpha might say, you know what, I think it would be a good idea if we decide in this community to do X, Y, and Z. The betas would be the police. They're going to enforce it. They're going to go around. They're going to start hitting people with their billy clubs. They're going to start locking people up who are layabouts or loitering, you know, whatever uh, the violation is. So those would be kind of like the betas, so to speak. The deltas are the third in line. They kind of do the same things that the betas do. They help with the enforcement. They help with kind of insulating the alpha and making sure that they're that first line of defense. If anyone wants to talk or get some ideas through to the alpha um, and the alpha is not necessarily doing the initiating. So if it's someone trying to initiate to the alpha versus the alpha initiating, they would be that kind of like first line of defense. Okay, then we have the omegas. The omegas are a little bit lower down. They're a little bit more socially awkward. If put in a position of leadership, they, they don't quite know how to handle it. They don't know what to do. Um, then we have the sentinels. Those are the patrollers. Those are like the military, um, kind of like the police as well in a way, because they patrol, they ensure, and make sure that the community is safe. Okay, so maybe like the Secret Service is like the betas or something like that. But you know, there are hierarchies and they're very complex in our community, but I'm trying to kind of break it down um, because it's, it's a little more simple or a little more simplistic when you take it from the animal world. Okay, and then we have the elders, okay, the elders in the primate community and or the wolf community. And that would be people of great experience and knowledge, role models, usually former alphas or betas. And what happens when an alpha comes to power, a lot of times, typically, they will have the support of the elders. The elders will be grooming them and helping them to get into position. And what that does is keep the elders in a certain place of power and position as well. They may not be the main decision makers, but they have a heavy influence and a heavy hand, right? So just getting that deep understanding of what the alpha male aspect is, let's get into this alpha female. So we have the myth of the alpha female, right? We have a lot of guys on YouTube talking about the alpha females. and Nobody wants the alpha female and they're going to track betas and, and they're so nasty and they're so mean. And, you know, what do these alpha females, who they think they are, they got all this masculine energy. So in a lot of ways, what we're seeing is we are seeing kind of a pushback that is kind of saying that alpha females are toxic to men in a lot of ways, right? They're saying that they're trying to be like men, that they're independent, bossy, they're bullies, they're tough, they're defensive, they're self-oriented, they're discouraging, they're over-talking, big talkers, talking over men, talking down to men or talking down to others. It doesn't just have to be men. These people can be seen, or these women in particular can be seen in your office, they can be seen in your friend group, they can be seen in your family. Um, and they're very materialistically oriented, right? So what I'm here to do today is kind of just tap into what you guys think a little bit and open up this discussion and see if we can get some clarity on what an alpha female is, okay? So let's see what you guys are saying here. We have Chinyelu, Chinyelu, 
The African concept of manhood versus European concept of manhood. What about it, sweetie? We're going to need a little bit more than that. Um, Jesse Hughes, an upright man. Okay, we're talking about the alpha. I think these are old comments when I was talking about what a true alpha is. Um, the sun has more than our one planet. Okay, that's getting a little deep, baby. I appreciate that, but let's try to stay on topic. You know, give me some stuff about the alpha males and females. What are your thoughts? Um, a man of love and full of understanding, Jesse Hughes. Yes, that's that is the alpha male. And however you feel about Obama politically, one of the things we can definitely say about Obama was that he was definitely an alpha male. He was very diplomatic. Some can say to a fault. He, you know, they felt that maybe at certain times he should have stood up more for, in particular, our community, the black community. But he was very, very diplomatic. And that was something that he was commended for around the world in the way that he was able to talk about issues that were very touchy, touchy topics and kind of keep the, the nation calm through some very difficult times, especially when a lot of the black boys were getting murdered and there was a lot of protesting. Um, you know, he came out and he didn't say as much as we wanted him to say, we wanted him to get up there and be as angry and, and upset as a lot of us were. But as a leader, it's important, regardless of Obama, Trump, whoever, we need diplomacy. And when we don't have diplomacy, things can get very, very sticky and tense. So we see what type of leader we have now. He's more of a loud talker, more of a bully, um, much more aggressive. And you can see the nation as a whole is much more divided. People are fighting and arguing over everything. We can't seem to agree on anything. So the leader really sets the tone. Um, so yes, a, a true alpha male or an alpha male that is a very well liked and strong leader is a man of love, full of understanding. He's human, obviously, but he's generous, he's open hearted, and he's willing to listen to people and try to create peace and make sure that the community as a whole is running as smoothly as possible. So Jesse Hughes says a woman of virtue. Now, we are going to get into that. We're going to get into that, a woman of virtue. Somebody said, I'm glad this talk is happening. Dean Demon, thank you. Okay, we all are held accountable to follow God, who is Alpha and Omega. Okay, Jesse. Um, anything else here? The nation is jacked up. Crystal Rice says, it depends on the man. Most men come to manipulate and misuse women, and those type of men have no respect. I have no respect for it, says Crystal Rice. Okay, well... Hmm. Okay, so do you think most men are there to manipulate and misuse women? I don't know if I completely agree with you, Crystal. Now, I'm assuming you're probably basing this on some experiences you've had or things that you've seen in your direct interactions with other women and men. I don't think that all men come to do that, but I do think there are definitely men out here that interact with women in that way. And you must be careful and you must protect yourself and, and choose wisely the men that you surround yourself with. So with dispelling the myth of the alpha female, on one side we have independent, right? That's what we're thinking about. We're thinking about the alpha female of today. She's an independent woman. But what if I bring this to you, and Franz talks about this. He touches on it in the latter half, I would say the latter five minutes of his video. He gets into what an alpha female is. So he talks about the alpha female is the matriarch of the community. She is the chief consoler in the community. When people are hurt, distressed, upset, fearful, they come to her for guidance, advice, comfort, consoling. So that would be the opposite of an independent woman, so to speak. Maybe not the complete opposite, but somewhat of an evolved opposite, if you can kind of catch what I'm trying to say here. She is more interdependent in the community. An alpha female is kind of the glue that holds the community together, so to speak. It's like an Oprah. And regardless of how you feel about Oprah and people call her a mammy and, and things of that nature, but that's kind of what a mammy was. And that might have been even our first foray into being an alpha female, believe it or not. Although we were kept in captivity, here's a theory. Even though we were in captivity, the mammy was the most, one, if one of the most, if not the most important female in the household even more so than the slave owner's wife. And why is that? Because she was looking after 
everyone. She knew where everything was. She was the person giving out medicine, advice, consoling, nursing, taking care of the slave master in many ways that you know we're not going to get into, but also being there to guide and advise. She was the one that everyone looked up to. It may not be the most glamorous thing during that time, however, it was a great position of power, believe it or not. There was some power to that, okay? And we see that maybe manifested in Oprah right now. We see that because Oprah is a spiritual person who gives a lot of spiritual guidance, not just to blacks, but in particular, white women, right? And that was, if you go back to Gone with the Wind and you look at that movie, um, Hattie McDaniels, was the person that that girl was running to. Oh, Brett has done whatever. And she's like, oh, it's going to be all right, Miss Charlotte, or whatever her name was. I can't remember because I've only ever seen the movie like once a long time ago. But, you know, she was the one who was consoling and giving her advice about her relationship and making sure she knew where the shoes were and putting on her nice outfit and all that. Believe it or not, in the animal kingdom, that is what the alpha female's role is. And she has a huge amount of influence and power because of her interdependence, her ability as a peacemaker. So we look at the opposite side is an independent woman who's bossy and or bully, a bully. And then on the, the side of the true alpha female, we have a interdependent woman who is a peacemaker on the side of what we believe socially, which creates a sort of toxic negative feel around alpha feminine females. We have women who are tough and defensive. But when we look in the animal kingdom and what Franz de Waal coined the phrase as the alpha female, we have someone who is soft and confident. She's consoling people. She's being a peacemaker, she's providing food, she's breaking up fights. She's sitting there and being that listening ear, right? When people have something, they call her up, oh my God, girl, this happened. Oh my God, she listens. She gives advice, support. That is an alpha female, okay? Self-oriented on, uh, on this side, we, we have like a self-oriented person. She's independent. She's bossy. She's, she's a little bit of a bully. She's tough, defensive, and self-oriented. We have on the other side someone who is generous and giving. So you know how everybody go to Big Mama or that auntie or that person in your life, and you know that no matter what you're going through, that person has your back. That person is going to not give you their last. Now, we're not talking about a pushover, okay? So please be clear. The alpha female is not by any means a pushover, but she is that person that if you don't have some food, she going to make sure you eat. You know what I'm saying? If you need a little extra money to get you through the week, she going to pull out some money and let you borrow and hold it for a minute. And she's expecting to get it back. And if she doesn't, there will be consequences. You will be ostracized by the community. That's where she holds her power because she has so many people who are coming to her that she's able to console and talk to. And it's not like she's just giving and not receiving. They give back to her. They look out for her. They take care of her too. And he talks about that in his video that when uh, one of the apes, I think it was called Mama or uh, Mommy or some, I don't know, they gave her some really generic name. But when she passed away, there was all this grieving. There was this big, you know, communion of, you know, the apes, um, that were just distressed and distraught because their emotional center was gone. So the alpha female is a great listener. She's supportive, right? So this is the truth of an alpha female. How does that feel to people to know that this concept, this maybe feminist concept of what uh, alpha female is, an independent, bossy, bullying, de tough, defensive, self-oriented, discouraging kind of, you know, and by discouraging, I mean talk down to, tell you what you can't and cannot do, um, big talker and very materialistic woman is not actually, truly what an alpha female is. How do you guys feel about that, that, you know, we're getting some new information? Let's see. Okay. 
these guys are arguing with each other. Let's see if we can get past that. Shakita Renee, um, it was. She held it down together, upside down, whatever. In a sad way, the mammy is the first black alpha female. Yes, okay, but is it sad, right? Because you guys probably, if you've been watching me for a few weeks now, you know that I like to take things that are seen in one way and kind of dissect them a little bit and try to, you know, get down to the nitty gritty of what those things are and get a true understanding so that we can empower ourselves to move forward in a new way, right? So, yeah, okay, slavery was definitely not cool, right? It was horrible, it was sad, it was a lot of different things. But if we look at that position, right, as an alpha female, and probably because of set up, because of slavery, we wanted to disassociate ourselves with that. We didn't wanna be soft, right? We didn't want to be the peacemaker, you know, trying to go and talk to Massa on behalf of, you know, uh, Bobby down in the field who did something and now he's getting ready to get whipped and we got to go be the diplomat and try to talk to Massa. You know, that was a lot, right? Um, I can only imagine, you know, that that was horrible, um, how horrible that was, right? So I'm not trying to sugarcoat it or make it sound like it was an amazing place to be or amazing position to be in. I'm sure it was it was horrible. But where from where we stand now, we may have wanted to distance ourselves from that by being very tough women, very independent women. We don't want to help people. We don't want to get away from me. I, I don't have nothing for you because during that time, all they're doing was take, 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 take. But now that we're no longer in that position, maybe we can reclaim some of these alpha female characteristics and use them from a place of freedom and a place of um, interdependence. Because again, our community is relying on us, whether we want that or not, we're part of the community and we wanna bring back that true definition and use that to help our own community, our own families, our own group of friends. We wanna take on those positions, if you so feel, if you so choose. I'm working on that for myself, and um, I'm here to help others see where they may fit into that hierarchy. So let's see what else you guys are talking about. Let's see. Um, okay, so really quickly, I just want to say thanks again for tuning in to Dina Jacobs tonight. We're talking about what is an alpha female, demystifying the alpha female. Is it a form of toxic femininity? As it stands today in the definition and the empowered alpha female corporate head, you know, um, independent woman who's bossy and bitchy, yes, that can be a very toxic image for us to uphold ourselves to or try to fit into saying that we are alpha females if we're going by that def definition. So I want to say thank you guys for tuning in to FlyNubianQueen.com tonight. Go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. If you think there's some people who would be interested in this conversation, please share this right now. Let them know. Go ahead and like it. That's going to let other people know that this is a good conversation and one that needs to be had. I'm glad to see you guys are here. Thanks for joining. Subscribe to FlyNubianKingTV.com. That's our growing network for men. Um, text the words QUEENS to 31996 to receive text alerts and special offers. And please take a second right now, again, if you guys haven't, give it a thumbs up, the like, the share. We're so glad that you're here. Um, and then uh, we have something new on iTunes. It is Fly Nubian Queens on iTunes. We have a podcast, so you can take me and some of the other queens with you on the go and download some of the, you know how you download some of the podcasts podcast episodes, some of your favorites. You can save them. You can create a little library of them. So we're just giving you one new way to like be a part of our community. It's growing every day and we're so glad that you're here. So if you want to get your money up, go to flynubianmoney.com, get that business started, flynubianbusiness.com, and you got to get some of our gear. Black Media Matters cups, t-shirts, mugs, talk black to me. I know you guys love Vicki Dillard and some of the other queens. Go get some of their t-shirts and, and support us that way. We, we want to have a sense of reciprocity here at Fly Movie and Queen. We want you to get something for the money that you give. So we do have some things there you should check out. So go to shopfnq.com. Now back to the subject.
And I want to see what you guys are saying. Dean Beeman says, clarity is a must. We as a society turn certain terms into triggering, triggering buzzwords with little to no progressive dialogue. Thank you, Dean Beeman. You know what? That's exactly how I felt about this. And that's one of the reasons that I did bring it to you guys, bring it to the queens and the kings who are here joining us tonight. Sek Imra says, let men define what an alpha female is. Well, Sek, it's not about, well, actually a man did, if you want to put it that way. Franz de Waal did some research and collected some data, and he says that an alpha female is an interdependent, peacemaking, soft, confident, generous, giving, supportive, listening woman who provides an emotional center of strength for the community. So a man did come up with that, and so I guess that is fitting into exactly what you want. There is not a queen without a king. Um, that's Sek Imra again. So it's interesting, you know, because a lot of men do want to, you know, get into this divisive thing. One of my goals here with these type of conversations is to reconnect men and women in our community. But it's first by the women kind of addressing some of the different things and getting clear on terminology so that we can start to talk and build and commune and come up with these type of code of conduct or ways of being or ideas of how we want to move forward in our community and how we want to project images of ourselves and get in control of that. So that's kind of the goal here is that the queens will build themselves. And I'm glad that the kings are here. I really appreciate you guys being here and giving some of your input because, you know, yeah, of course we want to hear from men and we want to hear from kids and we want to hear from young people, old, everybody. This is a community conversation. So there is no queen without a king. There is no king without a queen. We need each other. That's that. So let me see, there were a couple other notes. I wanted to talk about who do, who do you guys think? Who do you guys think are the alpha females of our community? I had a little, I had a little trouble with this. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I was kind of trying to pinpoint who I could confidently say are the alpha females of our community according to the new list, the new, the new definition. Not the old one, but we're talking about the new definition that we're getting familiar with, um, the emotional core women, the interdependent women who are, you know, leaders in the community. Who would you guys say? Let me see. Go ahead and type some names in. Um, I apologize to you, sis, for arguing with this non-factor. Don't worry about it, Crystal. Let's just get back on topic. Don't be distracted by, you know, it is challenging sometimes not to, to like not be distracted by outside negative voices. We all go through that. I was going through something early in the week, naysayers and people who couldn't see the vision that I was trying to put forward. And it happens. You get distracted sometimes. But what you want to do is pull yourself back and get refocused. So Crystal, maybe you can type something in and tell me who do you think in our community could be considered to be an alpha female? Now there is no right or wrong answer to this. I think this is something where we're kind of trying to figure out who are some of the elders, who are some of the people we can kind of look up to, to be a little bit of a guide according to this new definition that we have, this new way of seeing the alpha female. What do you guys have to say? Let's see. Alpha is God in the person, says Dwayne. <laughs> um, Dwayne says Farrakhan for the men. You know what? I might be inclined to agree with that in a certain sense because he is definitely very diplomatic. There have been some people who have said some really crazy things in the community, maybe done some crazy things, and he'll still sit down with them. He'll still embrace them. Even if you think about the Nation of Islam, like, they had some killers, drug dealers. Like, you know, look at who, um, when uh, uh, Malcolm X was Detroit Red and was doing all that crazy stuff. And then he became a member of the Nation of Islam. And he was able to, you know, regardless of his past, be elevated into a position of power because he was a great orator and he had a great story to tell where he could relate to people. So that is part of, you know, and, act, and you know, he wasn't the leader at the time, but I'm just giving that as a little bit of a segue example as to 
how that particular community tends to elevate alphas to a in to a position of leadership that are in the more true sense of an alpha someone who is diplomatic someone who is understanding someone who is a peacemaker someone who has um a certain eye for talent and can kind of see past your flaws and and move you forward as a as a community and put people into place um so I might agree. I might be inclined to agree with that. Auntie Maxine. Is that Maxine Waters? Some Sec M. Rossa Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Okay. Um, we have Joy Reid. I'm not as familiar with Joy Reid and Alexandria. I know a little bit about their politics. Um, let's see. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, in my viewpoint, is a little more harsh. Um, I don't feel the emotional center to her, not meaning she has to be all touchy feely and crying and stuff in front of people or, or you know what I mean? But I mean, I don't feel the openness of her embracing the different aspects of her lineage, which would, you know, she's talked about she's got this she's got that in her she's got some black she's got some native she's got some this you know whatever but i don't hear her kind of reaching out to those communities that's what more of an alpha female would be someone who's reaching out to the different communities and kind of saying you know what's going on over here what okay what are you guys what are your concerns all right okay all right so let me get that down and then what's going on over here in this community and what are your concerns all right okay and kind of bringing that together to try to create um some talking points for her campaign i haven't seen that from her maybe someone can correct me if they have um beyonce okay beyonce i did have her on my list right under oprah Okay, so Sek and Ra said Beyonce. Now, what do you guys think about Beyonce as a potential alpha female? Because I kind of feel like there's a little bit of a double-edged sword there with Beyonce. Now, Beyonce is in command of a huge group of people. She has her own community, the Beehive, I think it's called. Um, she has her, um, you know, people that if you say something against her, uh -uh, they're going to come and sting you up and tear you down, you know, on social media. Um, but I was kind of looking at what Beyonce stands for. And Beyonce is married to an alpha male. Um, Beyonce could be considered an alpha female in the following ways when I looked at it. She validates and consoles women in the community. So in particular, black women tend to identify with her, um, especially when she did Lemonade. I felt like that particular, what did they call it, like a visual audio experience that she created. I haven't seen the latest one, but just touching back on Lemonade, because I know the majority of people have seen that. I do feel like that was a form of her kind of consoling and validating and acknowledging and being supportive of the women who were out there in dysfunctional relationships. She talked about infidelity. She talked about being angry and she kind of embodied that in certain songs. She talked about, you know, uh, really enjoying being with her man at certain points in time. She kind of gave us um, different levels of emotionality and kind of like vibe with us about breaking up with the man, tolerating the man, get forgiving the man, dealing with a man who ain't shit. You know, she went to those different levels with us in those songs and those videos. And it kind of gave the community of women a kind of an emotional release, especially women who have gone through things like that. And so I do feel like through her art, Beyonce does embody that alpha fem female kind of characteristics um, where she demonstrates in a certain way how to be a peacemaker in the home. Because if you look at how that particular, how those songs went along, it was like, I'm mad, he's cheating on me, I'm angry. You know, I'm mad at Becky with the good hair. You know, um, I'm feeling some kind of way about it. Where did this come from? I'm taking a look at myself, my family life. Then she was kind of like, but I do love him. You know, 
we're going to get it together. Now we have sex again. Now we, you know, we're making up. So she kind of took us through this thing, you know, kind of demonstrated that. And I do think that is a way because she can't really do it like how Oprah does it, where Oprah brings on these spiritual leaders and, and brings on, you know, these people talking about they were molested and bringing on, you know, how she does it through her talk show. Beyonce does it through her creativity and her music. And then she did like, you know, formation where she empowered women and gathered women together who run the world girls girls who run the world she's like the leader of that you know but there's still a very feminine aspect to it even though she does kind of bring in some of the masculine elements so i don't know those are my thoughts what do you guys think 15 new comments let's get in it um Sheck and Ross says Beyonce Dove does have a message in her music that's significant. I agree. Crystal Rice said, yes, she did. Dante Wren says Alicia Keys. I think Alicia Keys, at a certain point, did bring some emotionality um, and some release to a lot of women through her music and some empowerment. Um, this girl is on fire. I was listening to that today when I was out shopping. They had, they were playing it. And I was like, this is a really cool song. I forgot about this song, you know? Um, and then she had some other songs where she was, you know, talking about, um, heartache and things of that nature, which is not uncommon amongst females. The thing with Alicia Keys, I think she was on her way to an alpha female position. And she did kind of stand up for women when she, uh, the women with the natural movement where she stopped straightening her hair, stopped uh, wearing makeup. And she was kind of like, look at me. This is me. I'm natural. I'm beautiful, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I do think that the community kind of, Something uh, changed when people really found out what happened between her and Swiss Beats and, and his ex-wife. And um, I think that's when she kind of fell from grace. And that would be an example where an alpha female may have overstepped um, her position or overstepped her place in the community and did something to where she could be considered to be um, self-oriented and a bully. Um, there's some different ways to look at that because some people can say, oh, she bullied her way, you know, she pushed that other woman out of the way and, and stepped into her position and that's very selfish and she didn't think about, you know, I think Swizz had a kid with the other lady and stuff like that. So that might be one of those situations where Franz DeWall was talking about with the primates where if you have a bit of a bully or a self-oriented leader, when they fall, they fall hard. So that's a way to look at it. Um, let's see who else you guys say. No, Beyonce is 100% alpha to me. That would be Sek Emra. He's got a lot to say, Sek. He's very vocal. Who else? 6,000 years ago, says Dwayne Muhammad, black men and black women were the alpha gods of the earth. Okay, I have definitely heard some theories like that before. Yes, she's a bit of a home wrecker, kind of. <laughs> that's Monique Chandal. I'm going to assume that you're talking about Alicia Keys. Um, let's see, that was the definite overstep. That's what Shakita Renee Smith said. Yeah, um, so let's think about, we got Oprah, we got Beyonce. Um, who else do you guys think in our community could be considered to be an alpha female? It, and you know what, maybe if, you know, we're having trouble pinpointing some other people in our community, who would you think, or who do you think, could be considered to be an alpha female by this new definition um, that we have here in the larger community. Because I was even trying to think about it that way because this is, um, I knew about this information before, but of course when I'm preparing to talk to you guys, I dive a little deeper into it and challenge myself to say, you know, who are the people even in my life that I can think about that might be considered alpha females by this uh, particular definition. Um, I'll throw someone else out there to you. Do you guys think Michelle Obama can be considered to be an alpha female by the previous quote unquote toxic, more debatably beta female definition or by the truer, newer definition that we're working with where they're talking about the alpha female as a softer, more open, um, emotional center for the community. Would you say that Michelle Obama falls in one or the other category? Or would you say that she straddles those categories? 
This is something I kind of struggled with when I was thinking about it. While I'm waiting for you guys to post your answers, do a little promo here. If you haven't already, you just joined us. We're talking about alpha females. Is it a to is it a form of toxic femininity, or is it? Um, do we have it all wrong? Is it the right way that we're thinking about it in today's society, or do we get need to get back to the original definition? of what an alpha female is and kind of have that understanding for ourselves and the community at large so we can start to identify those women who are true leaders in our community and continue to elevate them and learn from them and seek guidance from them as we move forward. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share to flynewbeingqueen.com. It's our growing network for melanated women just like you. We have one for men. It's called Fly Nubian kingtv.com and as for melanated men we have text uh the words queens to 31996 to receive text alerts and special offers from the queens uh if you want to get your money right you got to go to fly nubian money you want to start a business go see what they're talking about on fly nubian business and we have our newest thing which is fly nubian queens on itunes please subscribe to us there so let's see what you guys say so she Shakita Renee says that her mama is the alpha female. How do you know that, Shakita? Share with us how you know your mama. What, what does she demonstrate? Who are the women in your personal lives that demonstrate that? And tell me how they demonstrate being an alpha female. And what do you guys think about this new definition? How do you feel about it? Have, have any of you women claimed to be alpha females in the past, and now that you're hearing the new definition, you're rethinking that? Or have there been women who felt like they weren't alpha females and now that they heard the, def the new definition, they're like, you know what, I think that might be me. Or maybe the person I was looking up to as an alpha female, now I'm kind of rethinking that, you know? Let me hear from you. Okay, let me go in here and see what people are saying. Uh, Ingrid, hey, how you doing, Ingrid? Would you recap the definition? I will. Give me a second, okay? Um, I think Nene leaks on... Real Housewives of Atlanta. She's done things in her community for DV survivors. Crystal, can you can you expand on that just a little bit more so that I can know what she's done and we can kind of we can kind of uh, talk about that in a way. Yeah, I could kind of see what you're saying with Nini because she's very respected on the show, looked up to. People do come to her for advice and things like that. Um, she definitely could be considered to be the alpha female in that particular environment. Absolutely. Um, Michelle would be running in 2020, says Sek Emra. Shakita Smith says, but I think my mama is definitely alpha female. She takes nothing off nobody, but she nurtures like none other. You know, that is the balance because a lot of times the alpha female, some people, when they hear the definition, they're like, oh, that person sound like they getting ran all over. Or I used to be like that. And everybody was taken from me. Even in my past, I used to be a person who would give to people and, you know, take people in and listen to their problems. And, you know, there was a point in time where I felt like it was very, very draining to me. But that's before I knew how to take care of myself and set and maintain boundaries. And that is part of being an effective and long sustaining alpha female is knowing how to set boundaries uh, using your betas to enforce certain things, <laughs> allowing them to do that, and um, having a place that you can go to, preferably an alpha male, where you guys can go in and you can nurture each other and give back to each other and build up and then go back out into the community. That's why they say when you know an alpha female and an alpha male, they, they naturally come together. It's very challenging for an alpha female uh, to be with a beta or an omega or a sentinel because of those factors. You do need a man that, uh, according to this definition, you need to pair bond with a man that can be generous. If you're giving out to the community, he can give to you to help replenish you. And you can give to yourself and replenish yourself as well. But when you're pair bonding, that's kind of where it you know, comes together in the sense of you have someone that you can go to and you can be like, okay, you know, I've been out in the community. I've, you know, these Miss Johnson is sick. You know, I was making some meals for the homeless. And you see that a lot with the wives of alpha males. They become very philanthropic. A lot of times they start um, 
charities. They start after school programs. They kind of uh, get out and get really involved in the community. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that, but that happens quite a bit, even when you think about Michelle and Barack. So this is where we might be able to solidify Michelle's position as an alpha female. What is one of the big things she was doing in the last term when Barack was in? Healthy eating. Healthy eating in the community, in the schools in particular. Fighting childhood obesity, right? That's something that a lot of moms were struggling with, especially single moms who don't have time to really be figuring out the meals and the food and they're relying on the school to give their kids uh, a decent, healthy breakfast and lunch. So Michelle took on the charge of that. And that would be the role of an alpha female is to kind of go out and campaign and fight for those things in the community because women in the community, parents in the community were coming and saying, hey, my kid is diabetic, you know, and they're 10 and, and my kid is obese and I don't know what to do because I can't make them lunch or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I would say that probably things like that would solidify uh, her position. And that's something that she was definitely passionate about. Um, and then she would go out and kind of interact with the community. And like you saw her doing those dance things and stuff. Let's see. Crystal Rice, domestic violence victims programs. He had things like that and has done things to help them better themselves. Is that your mom that she's talking about or Michelle Obama? Provided things they may have lost because of leaving their homes. Crystal Rice, she's helped them by trying to rebuild their self-esteem and things like that. I think Crystal might be talking about her mom. I'm not sure. I could, maybe you're talking about Michelle. I don't know if she has a program like that. Shakita Renee Smith, she is like the mammy. She takes on the role of mama, daddy, teacher, nurse, wherever you need her to be. She can do it and find it for you, but not just for me, for everyone. That's your mom you're talking about, Shakita. I'm pretty sure because that's the last time, um, that's the last comment I saw up above. Um, yeah, you know, mammy, that has, that's like a heavy, heavy word, right? Um, but mammy stems from mommy. Um, an alpha female has some mothering qualities, but we don't want to take it all the way to the depths of we take, 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 take from that person and never give back. We want to have it at the place where that person is able to give because they're in such a position, typically with an alpha male, where there are unlimited resources that they can pull from. And they have that partner there that they can go to in those quiet moments and be replenished. That's why we need people to really understand what an, what an alpha female and an alpha male are. They're not there to bully and beat and boss people. They're there to be peacemakers and diplomats. They're there to console the community, bring people together. They're there to um, share and be generous, to make sure that things are evenly distributed, so to speak, in a certain way. Um, they're there to create more reciprocity in the community so that people aren't drained, you know? Um, they're there to listen and support ideas that make sense for the greater good. And they're also there to uh, make sure that uh, people are being disciplined and held accountable when things are not going right in the community. Let's see, thank you for the likes, guys. I appreciate it and all the feedback. Provide things they may have lost because of leaving their homes. Oh, sorry, rereading old comments. Let's get down a little bit further. Raji, I find everyone, females and especially males, always claiming they are alpha. You know what? That I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> okay. Um, I started a little later than normal, so I'm going to give it about maybe five or ten more minutes because I was having some te technical difficulties. But let's touch on that. Everybody out here is talking about they are alpha, female, they are, you know, a lot of independent women who have trouble finding men claim that they're alpha females. And they are, you know, very successful women typically um, who make great money. And um, what I found in looking into this is that Typically, the people who are shouting the loudest about being the alphas are usually the betas or lesser people most of the time. A lot of times, alphas do not declare themselves because it's already understood. 
Now, maybe in certain instances when they are assuming the position of an alpha, they may need to make some sort of declaration or show because you do see that in the um, animal kingdom as well. They do have demonstrations, but typically it's more through body language and innuendo and um, things of that nature where you see that take place. It's less often, but not completely. You know, nothing is 100% in life. Um, it's a little bit less often that they're going to be like, I'm an alpha. Or a woman is going to be like, I'm an alpha female. I remember struggling with that a little bit myself, you know, where I was wondering, like, you know, what, if, you know, hmm, looking at this topic, you know, do I identify as an alpha female? I feel a little weird about, you know, jumping out and being like, I'm an alpha female. And, you know, like, y'all better respect me and all that kind of stuff. Because I, you know, I was uh, evolving as a woman and, and really understanding, you know, who am I, you know, how does my past uh, work into who I am now? How much of that do I want to bring forward with me? How much do I want to leave behind? And I kind of had to like push back away from people and kind of get into myself. And that's when some of these questions started to emerge and arise about, you know, well, where, what is your position in your friends group? You know, I was having some issues with my friends and, um, some of them uh, I'm not friends with anymore. Some people I'm still friends, but more like acquaintances. And some of them I've become even closer with. But it was as I was kind of like involving myself. And I never really felt completely comfortable like announcing, I am an alpha female. It just, something about it didn't feel necessary to say. You know, like if you're an alpha female, you know who you are. You know who you are. And there's no need to make an announcement because others know that too. The alpha can be put in place by force, but it typically lasts longer and makes for a smoother reign if it's by consensus and coalition. So when you build coalitions in the community, that's how you can rise to power in a smoother way. And so I think that's something we should think about. And when I mean, when I say rise to power, I'm talking about a position of power within self, within the community, within your family. And then ultimately we're talking about rising to positions of power in the world. How can we take this new definition? I would like for you guys to think about this and talk to people about this in your community, in your friend circle, in your family. Is Big Mama, is she the alpha? Who's the alpha in our family? And just, you know, let's just open up those conversations and see, you know, take a look around. Even if you don't want to talk to people about it, you just want to meditate on it. Take a look around and see if you can start to identify the hierarchies in the different groups at your job, at the nail salon, you know, when you go in and you look around at Mei Ling and all them and you can see, you can kind of start to figure out who is the alpha, who's the, you know, who's running things in here. Start to get really good and really clear at identifying those things. And as you do, you'll be able to decide where you want to be because everybody needs to know their position. And once we're all in position, because you know you got Beyonce talking about formation and everything, right? Getting into formation. That's how we can go out and we can successfully win this war that we are in. And that's how we can successfully go and reclaim our thrones in our community, right? So, you know, Dina likes to take it deep. <laughs> One of the, the big words that I want to touch on before I go is interdependence. Interdependence, that, that was a new word to me a few years ago. And I want to share that with you because when I learned the definition of it, I was like, yes. <laughs> Interdependence, the dependence of two or more people or things on each other. The dependence of two or more people or things on each other. I hope you guys get that. That's what it's about. 
whether you're alpha, beta, delta, sigma, theta, whatever, <laughs> for all the fraternities and sorority folks out there, at the end of the day, we need to depend on each other. We have to depend on each other. There's no way around it. And that's what this is about. Some people are better at other things. Some people are better at things than others. And so we want to recognize our strengths and our weaknesses, and we want to be able to coalition build. Everybody can't be a leader, but everybody can operate in a way that is inter interdependent and therefore moving us forward in a very positive and, for the most part, smooth way. Nothing's going to be totally smooth, but we want to move forward in that way. So I want to say thank you guys again for joining me tonight. I'm here every, set, every Sunday at 7 p.m. That is Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on FlyNubianQueen.com on Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. Thank you, guys. I see all the thumbs up and the hearts and, and the likes. I love you guys, too. I really appreciate you being here and joining with me in this discussion. Um, again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to FlyNubianQueen.com. The guys and some of the ladies you might want to roll over to flynubiankingtv.com. They're talking about some really interesting things there. Text QUEENS. Now is the perfect time to text QUEENS to 31996, 31996. And um, get on iTunes and check us out, the podcast for Fly Nubian Queens. We want you guys to get your money right. If you ain't got your money right, your life ain't right. So go ahead on over to flynubianmoney.com and, and check out what you can learn there about how to increase your worth, your net worth. Um, FlyNubianBusiness.com for those of you who have business ideas. And we'd love for you to get some of our gear. So go to ShopFNQ.com. Follow me on Instagram. It is Dina, D E E N A, Jacobs, J A C O B S. What is the hell? I can't talk tonight. <laughs> I think you guys make me nervous sometimes. I'm still getting used to this. So follow me on Dina Jacobs Flaunts. That's F-L-A-U-N-T-S on Instagram. Like all my pictures and um, write comments, good or bad. I love it. I love the haters and I love the lovers. Um, thanks again, you guys, for being here. Just as a quick recap, because I almost forgot someone asked me to do it. The new definition that we have of the alpha female is interdependent, peacemaker, soft, confident, generous, giving, supportive, Listener, she is the emotional center of the community. It's a little different from what we're used to hearing about an alpha female, and that's why she compliments the alpha male because he is the mirror image of those things in a masculine entity. So I hope this got this gave you some insight into your own lives and and some of the things that we're seeing going on out here in the media and in our communities, and gives you a little fuel to the fire of moving things forward in a positive direction, onward and upward. Love and light, Dina signing off. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye, everybody.